Hi everybody, um, this is Sandy Monroe with a disclaimer. So um, I visited several different um, technology companies. I've seen lots and lots of different battery companies, um, all kinds of things. And uh, seldom do I get too enthusiastic, but uh, today I'm gonna have to tell you before you see this video that Energy X um, impressed me quite a bit. Um, as Elon Musk said, Elon said that um, um, lithium is gonna be the new gold um, in, uh, in the future, and I truly believe that. So um, they offered me an advisory board position, which I accepted, and I also bought stock. So if you wanna get off the, uh, don't wanna see this, turn it off now. And, um, and walk away. But I think, um, I think that you'll be kind of interested in this new process that Energy X has come up with. And so you do what you want. I thought it was a good idea. Anyway, here's the program. Hey boys and girls, uh, we're here over at Energy X. I'm with uh, Teague Egan, and um, hey, we're gonna take a little uh, trip down, um, what would you call this, distillation lane. So uh, we're gonna find out about uh, getting lithium out of salt brine, and normally from, um, from the uh, <clears throat> lithium triangle. So uh, Teague, why don't you give us a little uh, information on uh, your South American trip, a little bit about yourself, and we can go from there. Perfect, thanks, Dandy. Um, so I'm Teague, uh, the founder and CEO of Energy X, and Energy X is a lithium extraction and refinery company. So we look at how do we take, how do we produce lithium more abundantly, more efficiently, and more cost effectively for batteries for electric vehicles to basically power the electric vehicle transition. Um, the majority of lithium in the world is found in salt brines, uh, brines that have a lot of dissolved minerals in them, uh, one of which being lithium. So there's other minerals that are dissolved in these brines that are found in the lithium <clears throat> triangle in South America, uh, such as potassium, magnesium, sodium. And what we do here with uh, our extraction and refinery technology is selectively separate and extract just the lithium out of the brines uh, at over 90% recovery rates to be able to refine that and use it in batteries. That's a huge number. Um, and um, you were talking about the concentration rates in parts per million, which are mm, initially impossible, like if we just look at ocean water and, um, and pretty profitable uh, with, the, with the brine that you found in this uh, lithium triangle. So to put things in perspective, uh, there's salt in ocean water, right? Um, that salinity level is about three and a half percent. So if you've ever got a mouthful of ocean water when you're swimming, you think that's salty. The brines that we operate with are about 30% salinity. So think about the Dead Sea in Israel where you can actually float because it's so salty. Those are the types of brines uh, in the lithium triangle or there's some in the United States that you find higher concentrations of lithium. So out of that three and a half percent salt, uh, you'll, you'll typically find single digit PPMs, parts per million in ocean water, maybe one PPM, three PPMs. In the lithium triangle or the brines that we look at in the United States, yeah. you're looking at hundreds of parts per million. So maybe 400, 500, all the way up to maybe 1500 or 2000 parts per million. And that is, an yeah. adequate brine, which you want to extract the lithium from. Mm -hmm. So where are you getting your brine currently to do uh, this process? How, where are you, you import it from uh, Bolivia or something like that? Or where, where are you getting it from? 
Well, so today we're in Austin, Texas at our uh, innovation labs, right? And this is where we do all of our testing. Uh, right now we're standing in our circuit room. So we have different technologies that act as unit operations, which we process the brine through in a, basically like a step-by-step -step continuous refinery process. However, you can only ship so much brine from yeah, a resource right. site to here. So this is just our testing facility. Uh, we also do a little bit larger scale pilot testing, but when you start to get to the larger volumes, that needs to be on site uh, right, yeah. at the resource or within a reasonable driving yeah. distance. So we do all of our bench scale and pilot scale testing here, and then we're building several market demonstration plants, uh, one in Chile, one in Argentina, uh, and one here in the United States that can test at a larger, basically last step before commercialization plant size. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. And actually we're gonna be um, looking at your, uh, your pilot plant a little later on. <clears throat> right now in the lab, we're just gonna get a, a flavor of how things work uh, at, at a high level. And then uh, swing over, have a look at the, the pilot plant and then maybe we can talk about the future because lithium is kind of like a big deal right now. And you mentioned uh, that also in the um, in these brine pools or these, what would they be like an inland sea or, or are they underground? Where Are they above ground or underground or where are they? So the, 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 the brine is typically found underground. It's a subsurface yeah. liquid, yeah. Uh, but they're typically below large salars that are dried up salt lakes. Right. Uh, so these used to be like the Great Salt Lake yeah. in Utah, yeah. um, but even around the Great Salt Lake in Utah, you still see huge salt flats, yeah. like where they do the racing, the Bonneville, yeah, right. uh, the Bonneville flats, racetracks, yeah. or the big UTTR where right. the military tests. That's a big salt flat that has a lot of uh, brine underneath that has dissolved salts. So as opposed to oil and gas drilling, where you have to go super deep, maybe like 10,000 feet, uh, you still have to drill a well, but it's much closer to the surface. Mm -hmm. um, these can be a couple hundred feet, maybe even less. So you're drilling very near surface wells and you're pumping yeah. up uh, all this brine that is yeah. super rich in these dissolved minerals, one of which is lithium. So let me ask a question because like um, most people don't know, uh, you're, not allowed to own, um, you're not allowed to own crude oil. It just, uh, it's, it's nasty and they just don't allow it. So, uh, and cause we, we tried to get some to do some testing on a, on a process that we were looking at. What about uh, these salt brines? Uh, do, do they have a caustic element? Uh, are they, I imagine you wouldn't want to drink it or eat it, but, <laughs> uh, but uh, do they have, uh, do they have any, any uh, toxic nature that would allow uh, or, or cause uh, a problem? So, so there, there definitely are very high elevated levels of salt. Uh, like yeah, I said, 30% right, yeah. salinity. Um, and this is at those levels, extremely corrosive stuff. Uh, like it will rust pipes and things like that almost immediately. Um, so when, when you bring it up, it, there's no like explicit toxic element to it, but just because yeah. of the levels of salinity, um, it's really corrosive and somewhat difficult to handle. Uh, so that's why the extraction and refinery processes that we've come up with are specially designed to handle such high levels of salinity to eliminate the impurities, basically everything but lithium and separate lithium so we can concentrate it and then use it in batteries. So with a waste uh, product, like we were talking about magnesium, magnesium is also a big deal. And um, can you extract, say, both the lithium and the magnesium? Could you get into a situation where a byproduct, <laughs> it won't be as much, it, it won't be worth as much per kilo or gram, actually, as, uh, as lithium, but, um, but it's still kind of uh, an interesting, uh, uh, an interesting interesting material that, that people are trying to use more of, but the cost is too high. Yeah. So all of the salts that are dissolved into the, the brine uh, have value or application one way or another, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, sodium is typically the most abundant one and sodium chloride, table salt, right? Yeah, right yeah. Potassium, uh, potassium chloride is used as fertilizer, potash for a huge agricultural business yeah. um, and industry. Magnesium, like you said, magnesium chloride, which is in the salt form, is typically used as road salt uh, for de-icing and things like yeah, that. Yeah. But if you purify magnesium all the way to the elemental metal level, yeah. that obviously has a much greater value than say the salt form magnesium right. chloride. Yeah. So all of these things have different applications and value. But for us, we've specifically designed our technologies for lithium only. So we want just, we're separating just the lithium out of all these other things. So what do you we, do with the, uh, with the byproducts, the, whatever's left so over? So once, so we will, br just to visualize this, we'll pump up the brine, it'll run through our systems. Yeah. We'll separate just the lithium out of this brine that ha still has yeah. all these other dissolved salts, and then we'll re-inject it. Uh -huh. You could theoretically, once, once we've taken the lithium out, then have a further processor te technology that might be a tweak on our system to selectively take out magnesium or, or the other elements that are dissolved. But for us, we're purely focused on lithium because it has the highest value. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, I'm just kind of curious as to, mining and refining is kind of dirty and nasty and uh, the refining process for lithium is, uh, real nasty. It's really, really tough to get a authorization to pull it out of the, because we have tons of lithium um, on what they call the badlands between Canada and the United States. Um, but refining out of there, uh, everybody says, I don't think so. And scooping it up is no big wow, but the refining part is. And this sounds like it could be a little more um, <clears throat> hospitable than, uh, than what we have to do in order to normally mine lithium. Yeah, so that, that's actually the big step change that we've invented here at EnergyX. The existing methods of brine production or lithium production from brine use these massive evaporation ponds. Correct. These, these ponds can actually be the size of New York City one pond system, 15 square miles. I mean, that, that's enormous. And the way that it's currently produced is you pump the brine up from the wells, like I described, and you put it into these huge evaporation ponds that A, take up 15 square miles of land footprint, B, take 18 months of residency time for the brine to go through the sequence of multiple ponds, and then three, only have a 30 to 40% recovery rate of the initial lithium that you pump up from the ground. <clears throat> the, the step change in technology of direct lithium extraction or DLE, what we've invented here at EnergyX, you pump that brine up from the ground, you feed it through these mechanical controlled separation processes like I'm gonna show you here today, and then with a 90% recovery rate, you extract the lithium and then re-inject the rest of the brine back into the ground to avoid disturbing the surrounding water table that other yeah. industries and communities need for things like agriculture. Well, the, uh, <laughs> that's another one of the things that we're having a problem with in extracting oil. Um, water has to go pump back down into the uh, oil reservoir it does two things. One pushes the oil back up, but it also um, it also fills the void, so we don't have cave-ins and things like that. Right. Um, so this sounds like if you pull just the lithium out, be very very little differential between the volume you pulled out and the volume you put back exactly. in. Exactly. That sounds that sounds pretty uh, sounds pretty good. Yeah. That's the only way to do it right now all that brine that comes up that goes into the evaporation ponds, the method by it which the they way. refine, yeah. the sun evaporates the water. So you're losing yeah. millions and millions of tons of water and then the salts precipitate out and then they scoop that up and that's what they use for, for the different salts and, and lithium. Yeah, and then they still have to go through the refinement process right. and on and on and not, not a good, not a good plan. So I'm, that's why I'm kind of interested in this. It sounds like it's a, 
a cleaner uh, process. I don't know how you do it yet, but um, but um, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. So let's get let's into go it. Go for a tour. Yeah. Okay. I want to. I'll show you the. I'll show you this stuff first. Okay. So. <clears throat> At EnergyX, we've decided that uh, direct lithium extraction isn't just one technology. Uh, you can use multiple technologies in a refinery process, and we've developed what we consider a DLE platform. So the, one of the key things to understand is that all these brines that we're trying to treat, whether it's from Chile or Bolivia or California or Texas, they're all different. And you can't, and there's no such thing as a one size fits all technology, whether it's absorption technology or the other ones that we'll look at. This cannot treat every single brine in an end to end process. And the only way that we were going to be the leaders in direct lithium extraction is if anybody could send us a brine and we could deliver back a battery grade lithium product. And in order to do that, we needed to have a portfolio of technologies within this DLE platform. Mm. So the first technology that we've developed is called adsorption. And you'll see here a column that has packed within it uh, resins or adsorbents that when you flow the lithium through the column, the, the resin will absorb the lithium. The rest of the brine will pass through and now you have essentially a saturated uh, bead or resin that has the lithium from the brine. Mm. <clears throat> the way to release it is to pass fresh water through that will release the lithium. And now theoretically you'll have a, a, a solution that has less impurities than the original brine, much less impurities and essentially all the lithium or at least over 90% of the lithium that was in the original brine. So this is, this is a great technology that removes the bulk of the impurities, not all, but the bulk of the impurities and uh, maintains over a 90% recovery rate of lithium. So um, is this uh, recovery system, is this like a public domain or is this part of your... Uh... So everything <laughs> you're seeing here is proprietary. Um, and there's multiple levels of technology that we've developed. So the first thing that we take really seriously is the actual material that's doing, that's affecting the separation. So yeah. this resin in here is designed by us uh, in the laboratories that we'll see. And we've tested hundreds of iterations of different resins and uh, molecular compositions to figure out what will absorb and select the lithium the most. Mm. The second level of IP revolves around the actual system itself. So this is a bench scale and you'll start to see uh, larger systems when we get to the pilot facility, but we've designed the column to be the most effective at holding and distributing the brine through the column. Because if the brine passes through, and creates channels in which it can easily bypass the resin, then you're not using all the resin that's packed within the column, right. Yeah. right? So that's an important level of IP, the actual system design. The third level of IP uh, involves the different technologies that we have and how they interact with each other. So I mentioned that the way to release the lithium from the resin is to pass fresh water through this, but you don't wanna use a lot of fresh water in your system because it's really scarce and valuable in some of these areas. So the way that adsorption interacts with solvent extraction, which is our next technology, we have water recycle to save 80 to 90% of the fresh water. That's a patented and proprietary approach. So, um, so the fresh water that you've used <clears throat> to uh, release the lithium is like, this looks like a drip feed kind of a scenario. Is that uh, rapid or is that also a kind of a drip feed? So you'll have a series of these columns and once the lithium is saturated, then you'll insert water through 
uh, and that will release the lithium while the brine is going to the next column. So there's typically four columns in a system, and you'll, it's it's kind of a batch process, so it's but it's continuous. Yeah, yeah, it's a continuous. So a parallel processing system. Exactly, and parallel it's processing. Yeah, okay, great, good. So <clears throat> what I'm looking at is dark brown. Is that because it's the uh, the brine that gives it that color, or no? That's that's the color of, of the bead. Um, we're 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 te we this is this is our testing room. Right. So we test uh, dozens of different resins that we've developed. Mm -hmm. um, this one just happens to be dark. You'll see lighter ones at different parts of the tour. Yeah. So the brine itself does it come in looking fairly transparent or like water, or is it a uh, it has uh, kind it, of a brownish uh, yeah, uh, look, kind of like that right there. Uh, okay. That might be what a brine looks like. Uh, but but like I said, it can mm -hmm. vary because based on the impurity profile and what mm -hmm. salts are dissolved into this brine, yeah. it's up to 30% <laughs> salinity. So it can, it can look transparent. And once we process it, it will be transparent because that's a purified solution. Yeah. But in its raw original state, it'll kind of look yellowish or brownish yeah. okay, because great. it's, it's, it's pumped up from mm -hmm. the ground where there's, you know, sediment and soil and it's coming out yeah, from, right. yeah. you know, it's not going to be a pure, pure looking yeah. thing. So let's look at, let's look at solvent extraction. Now this is the second one. And, uh, this technology is truly a workhorse for direct lithium extraction. Um, the important things to note when trying to understand solvent extraction and understand how it works is that oil and water are impermissible. They don't mix, right? So you can see here some fa what's called phase separation, right? And this is, the, this is a simple, simple concept in separating oil and water in oil production scenarios, right? Um, but they do mix if, if you create what's called an emulsion uh, and try to mix them together, they'll, they'll touch at certain points. So we've created a specific molecule called a reagent that can grab lithium out of brine and then moves into a carrier solution. So we'll mix the brine with our reagent in the back in what's called a mixer right here. And then it'll pour over into what's called a settler right here. Now that our reagent has the lithium, it'll separate into this oil phase and the lithium depleted brine moves to the bottom. Mm. So, so then you'll do this in a number of stages to make sure that you purify uh, the lithium away from the brine as much as possible. And solvent extraction is really responsible for concentration and purification. So I mentioned earlier that adsorption uh, gets rid of the bulk of the impurities, but it won't concentrate the lithium up. So if you have a lithium brine that has 400 parts per million and run it through adsorption, you will probably stay at four, five, 600 parts per million, but you'll eliminate the bulk of the impurities, all that magnesium or calcium, sodium, etc. So into this enters now a uh, four, five, 600 part per million lithium stream with some impurities. This will concentrate the lithium up to say 20,000 parts per million and eliminate the rest of the impurities. That's what solvent extraction does. Okay, so I'm looking at um, what looks like layers of material. What uh, would that be? Or is that just a chicken band holding it in place? <laughs> I, so you don't, want, you don't want layers of materials. Uh, you'll see in this one or this one that it's a pretty clean cut. Yeah. That, that's what you want. So these are different ongoing experiments. You can obviously see this one's yellow. This one's red. Uh, different experiments with different reagents. Um, you definitely don't want something like that. Cool. Let's move to the next technology, which is a membrane based technology. So after we've uh, touched on adsorption and solvent extraction, 
This is our membrane separation technology. So you can think about the way that membranes can turn ocean water into fresh drinking water yeah. by removing all the salts, right? Yeah. right? Um, granted, that's only about three and a half percent salinity, uh, but membranes are a very good filter or sieve and are used in essentially every single type of separation in every single industry, whether it's yeah. agriculture or food or oil and gas, membranes are prevalent. So we've designed our own proprietary membranes to be lithium selective. Uh, what we use membranes for is a direct conversion to go from the final product out of solvent extraction, which is lithium chloride, and convert that directly to lithium hydroxide, which is what is used yeah, in batteries. Right. Um, so we'll, we'll feed uh, the lithium in through this system. It'll go into one side. You can see here, there's a stack of membranes. There's about 10 membranes right here. Uh, at the pilot facility, we'll show you much larger stacks that we've designed for pilot and demonstration scale. But then lithium chloride will feed into one side and then lithium hydroxide will exit the other side. And that's your battery grade. Uh, it's, it's what you want to use in batteries. And then all you have to do is crystallize it using the last step of technology. Mm. They're very good. Yeah, um, I'm kind of familiar with um, with this type of a process. I mean, Singapore, that's how they get almost 80%, 90% of their water is exactly. with uh, re reverse osmosis. So this, uh, this is kind of uh, interesting because again, I won't see great big giant smokestacks and I don't have to worry about polluting the air, the water and everything else. With this, that's like actually this. a really good point that I think uh, might be interesting for your viewers. So there's different ways to move a solution through a membrane. You mentioned yeah. reverse osmosis. So reverse osmosis is the concept of high pressure pushing uh, a solution through right. a membrane, right? Right, right? That takes a pretty high amount of electricity or power. Right. The second type or way that you can move a brine or a solution through a membrane is forward osmosis. So that's the concept of pulling it as opposed to right. pushing it. Yeah. If you have a really high concentration or salt concentration lithium uh, brine on one side of a membrane and then a fresh water solution on the other, that fresh water is gonna wanna pull the salt so that it evens out, mm -hmm. right? So if you start with 30% salt in one solution and zero, this, the water will pull that through but there's two problems with that. One, you need a lot of fresh water on the draw side. And two, it moves really slow right, yeah, to even yeah. out to that concentration gradient. The third way that you can move a brine through a membrane, which we use, is called electrodialysis. So you literally have an anode and a cathode on one side or on each side, and the uh, electric current or electric potential is driving through and because the membrane is selective, only the lithium will pass through. Mm -hmm. So we use electrodialysis. Um, so there's an anode and a cathode on each side. It's not hooked up right now, but you can see the red or the black on one side and the red on the other. Mm. Um, so there's your two ter terminals. Yeah, two yeah. terminals. So um, the black one's hot and the, well, the red one's, it could be either way, I guess, but it, it's so it closes the circuit. Yeah. yeah. And then finally, crystallization. So through that third level of IP that I described, the different synergies amongst the technologies, coming out of our membrane unit, you have such a concentrated, purified lithium hydroxide solution that you only need one step of crystallization. As opposed to the current way, you usually need multiple steps Correct. of crystallization. So there's nothing proprietary here on this crystallization unit, um, but the fact that we only need one step of crystallization improves the economics of the overall system. That's amazing. I would have never guessed. Never. Huh, that's cool. Oh, let's go and have a look some more. So Teague, I, uh, I mean, the the, uh, the tour of the lab was pretty good. I uh, that was very informative. How how did you get started in this? Uh, where, you know, give some background about you. Yeah. 
Um, I'm unlike most, I would say. Uh, I don't have a technical background or an engineering background. Um, I'm an entrepreneur uh, mm. and a businessman. And my father was an entrepreneur and I've learned the, the tricks of the trade from him. So mm. I can say that what I am good at is building teams. Um, yeah. What I've done at Energy X is I identified the problem, which is this lithium demand supply gap, uh, a big lithium shortage with a, a really high demand. And that's the problem that I set out to solve uh, and build a company around yeah. to solve that problem. But the first thing that I did was to go look for people that were smarter than me, uh, scientists that were already yeah. working on this problem that maybe didn't have the business side. Uh, and we brought together a world-class team of scientists and engineers to help develop the technology. So we're about 75 people now at Energy X, yeah, yeah. and 35 of those are PhD scientists. Um, another 15 or so are engineers. Um, yeah. And then we have a great team of legal and marketing and business development and operators uh, that you'll see here. But I, I had the vision. Um, and then I went out and built the team uh, to do that. Wow. Very cool. Wow, that is cool. I'm, uh, I'm very impressed so far. So let's take a look at the, uh, <clears throat> the pilot plant you got going on here. Yeah. So everything you'll see here yep. is just sized up from the bench circuit, uh, yeah, right? Okay. Um, I'll show you some of our pilot equipment. And then we also have another level, another scaled level, which is our demonstration scale which is like these large columns right here. So yeah. this is a demonstration scale. What I showed you in the laboratory was those uh, glass cylindrical columns right. yeah. uh, that were, they were very small in diameter. These are two feet in diameter. When we get to commercial, these will be 20 feet in diameter. <laughs> but let me, let me show you some stuff. <clears throat> so, when we test uh, brine, either from our own resource deposits, our own lithium resources, or uh, customers that we're licensing our technology to, they'll ship us brine in these IBC totes. So this is, this is one cubic meter of brine. Right. Um, here at this pilot facility, we can go through one of these per day. Uh, so the systems that you're about to see will have a feed input of about one liter per minute, okay? When we get to the demonstration scale, like those columns I showed you, we'll do one of these per hour. And that is the largest size that you need to go before you go to a full-blown commercial plant. I see. But today, one of these per day, which is equivalent of one liter per minute, you can see here kind of the yeah, color the water line. I was describing, uh, yeah. the yellow and the water line. Yeah. Um, So we'll start here. This is our pilot scale uh, absorption system. Um, I mentioned back at the lab that there's four columns. So you can see the four columns yeah. uh, in parallel. And these columns are packed with our resin uh, that we've designed. Um, it's, it's an absorption unit. So you, you flush or release with fresh water. Uh, we've designed this system. Um, one of the keys of Energy X, we will make in-house all of our own materials. So the resins, the reagents for solvent extraction, or the membranes. All of that is manufactured in-house. For the actual systems, we've designed the systems ourselves, but we won't manufacture this stuff. We'll have third-party uh, equipment OEMs that will manufacture the equipment to our proprietary design specs. Right. So again, this is the first step. I explained how it worked in the lab, but we're doing this now at one liter per minute, as opposed to the bench scale, which is in the tens of milliliters per yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we probably had to back up and go yeah, around. Yeah, we can uh, move, we can go around. What's up, Norman? Hey. How are you? Good, how are Good you? to see you. So 
Okay, let's go over here a little further. So this is solvent extraction. Um, over in uh, the lab, we showed you the circuit, which right. was those cylindrical columns that had the phase separation. This is uh, what's called a mixer settler. Uh, it's just in a larger format. So back in the corner there, you can see where we mix uh, the reagent with the lithium containing brine, which creates the emulsion, right? And that's where the reagent will make contact with the lithium and grab it out of the brine. And then it'll flow over into what's called the settler. And you can see here the phase separation that's created where the lithium is now in the reagent in the carrier solution. And you have the brine that is now lithium depleted that exits out of one system where the lithium containing reagent exits out of another system. So we go through these stages to get as purified, concentrated lithium as possible. Um, and this is the second step of solvent extraction. Oh, very cool. You know, I was just thinking something, um, most, of the, uh, most of the inventors that we come across have almost no business experience. And so they hire people for that. You're more like a Carnegie or a or Rockefeller, um, where they had no concept of uh, making steel or or refining oil, they were kind of the uh, the businessmen, the uh, the uh, I don't know the pioneers in 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 making things happen, but looking at things in a grander scale than what an engineer does. This is a very interesting. Uh, I think you're the first guy that I bumped into that, uh, that, that has come across a good idea and then figured out how to find the, uh, the engineering talent to make it work. Thank you. Yeah, that's... I'll take Carnegie or Rockefeller. Yeah, well, they, they made out okay. I, I don't know if you heard. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Actually, even the, even the guy that owned McDonald's, uh, he... Uh, <laughs> yeah. The engineers had a great idea and wow, couldn't make it great. go. Yeah. Um, so this is the membrane scale up over here. I'm not sure if it's in here right now. Let's see the stack. Nope. So this is, this is the unit in which we run uh, our pilot scale membranes. And typically there would be a stack of membranes in here, ah. uh, which I can show you what the stack looks like. Okay. Uh, and then this whole system runs the product or the fluid solution from solvent extraction through our membrane stack. Um, this is what we use to convert the lithium chloride to lithium hydroxide, which is the mm -hmm. battery grade product. Yeah. Um, right here, you'll see what a pilot size stack looks like. Uh, so you remember the stack in the lab, much smaller, only 10 membranes. Yeah. This you can scale up to about 60 membranes inside the stack. Um, this is all designed by us. And then right here, you'll see the larger demonstration scale stack. Uh, that has about 30 cell pairs inside. That can scale up to 150 to 200 cell pairs. Hmm. Um, so this is one liter per minute. That is the demonstration scale that would be matched with those large white columns yeah. that we looked at, which is one cubic meter per hour. One cubic so meter per hour. So right now, we have essentially <clears throat> completely validated our technology. Uh, there's no technology risk anymore. Yeah. And we're working through how to scale it from the bench to the pilot scale to the demonstration scale. And we're building these demonstration plants in the field because you want to test at one cubic meter per hour for about a thousand hours. So essentially a thousand cubic meters. You're never going to ship a thousand of those yeah, turrets right. yeah, yeah. here to Austin. Yeah, yeah. It needs to be right next right. to the resource. Yeah. So we're building those facilities uh, on site or within a driving distance, like maybe a few hours, where we can ship one truckload or 24 mm -hmm. cubic meters per day every day. 
And that will be the last step before we build our large commercial plants that can do 10, 20, 50,000 tons of lithium. Okay, good. So let me ask you a question. <clears throat> I see one of those uh, cubic meter uh, tubs over there. Mm -hmm. How much on average, I mean, I know that it's going to have different concentrations and whatnot, but out of a cubic meter, what would your expected uh, yield be? How many grams or whatever of uh, lithium? Yeah. So again, that, that completely depends on the concentration of lithium. If you have one cubic meter, which is um, a thousand liters uh, of brine, or, or one ton is a thousand kilograms, yeah, right. um, and it has uh, maybe a few hundred parts per million, or say it has a thousand parts per million, right? Yeah, right. Um, 1,000 parts per million is one one thousandth. There's a thousand thousands in a million. Yeah. So you would get one kilogram of lithium out of one cubic meter of And that's brine. a lot. <laughs> that's right. a lot of yield. I, I'm finding that. That's, that's it. That's it. A hundred percent recovery rate. We're clipping over 90%. So you could say 0.9 kilograms. That's kind point of nine. a rough, yeah. <laughs> point nine or, one, or, or one, one, kilogram, yeah. one kilogram out of a, of a, that, yeah. that kind of yield on a mine is just not even possible. Uh, uh, it's just, it's just not even possible because lithium is so bloody light and, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. That, mm -hmm. that is, uh, that is, a, um, how many investors or where are you financially and things like that, uh, What's, uh, what, what are you working on? Yeah, we've been, we've been pretty creative uh, in the way that we finance the company. So first, I self-financed the beginning of the company. Uh, I put in the first million dollars, and then I've invested in every subsequent round of financing. Mm -hmm. uh, so our Series A, that was led by some high net worth individuals and some strategic investors, um, I put in another million, and we did uh, we did our Series A in 2021. Um, that was about 15 million. And then we did our Series B in earlier this year. We finished that. And that was led by some large strategic investors, including General Motors, who led the round, as well as POSCO, the large Korean uh, steel maker, uh, cathode, yeah, and lithium yes. producer. Mm -hmm. So we have some great strategic institutions on our cap table now. But mm, fabulous. Every time we do an institutional round, in between, we do these retail offerings. So anybody can go on to the EnergyX website, yourself, Eric, your, your followers, and invest yeah. in EnergyX and get into a high growth startup alongside these big institutions before we go public. And I think that it's a really cool thing. We have about 5,000 investors in the company right now. Mm -hmm. And it's cool because we're allowing all these people to participate in an exciting high growth energy transition startup where they otherwise may not have access to such an investment opportunity. Mm. Mm. This is, this is um, just more of our circuit testing. So mm -hmm. same size as the stuff over in the lab. The only difference here is these are jacketed. Yeah. So what that means is there's two layers of glass so we can control the temperature at which we're doing these separations. Huh. I don't know if we can get a good angle on this, but this is where we make the reagents or the adsorbents in these. Maybe if I move this Actually, over. Actually, um, if this is where you're manufacturing them. So your agents are polymer? Yeah, there's polymer aspects to it. So... This is our pilot scale reactor. Um, for the bench circuit over in the lab, we make that stuff in the fume hoods at small scale, yeah. right? Because yeah. you don't need that much for that scale. But once we get over here to the pilot scale, we need a decent amount of the actual reagent or the adsorbents. And we make it in these 100 liter reactors here. Um, so like I said, we make all of our own materials in-house. That's kind of the secret sauce. And right. this, is, this is where we do the majority of that. Mm. 
So did you design this uh, unit yourself? No. <laughs> uh, our, our senior, our senior <clears throat> PhD chemists. No, no, uh, it's, I mean, oh, it, oh, it's oh, the company. Yeah, the yeah, company, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Our, our senior vice president of lithium extraction has 30 years of experience from BASF, the largest chemical producer in the world, and he designed this whole reactor system. All right, well, Teague, this was a pretty good uh, tour. Um, certainly, uh, certainly, it's a little different than what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so, um, and, and you kind of moved into uh, a venue that, quite frankly, is needed if the volumes are even close to what you're saying. I mean, it's, it's probably 10 times better than anything I've heard so far. Not to mention it's clean. <clears throat> and like I said, I wasn't, I wasn't jerking your chain. Um, some of the biggest inventions and biggest companies that were ever um, made in the United States. Now, you know, Henry Ford did a great job, but uh, General Motors was put together by um, Billy Durant, and uh, he was not an engineer, and he definitely wasn't uh, building cars and whatnot. You've taken a different kind of approach to putting a company together. Well, not different than what they did, but different than everything we've seen in the EV world. So it's a kind of a, kind of different, um, a different approach to have a business and entrepreneurial look at how we're going to get going versus, hey, I've got an invention and and here we go. So I, I'm kind of impressed. Um, I, I was just wondering, is there anything else that's like on the horizon that you're thinking? Uh, thinking about or trying to figure out what you're going to do next, as it were. Yeah, I mean, as, as it goes for Energy X, I think that really the next step in our evolution is to commercialize the technology. We feel that we have built uh, best in class direct lithium extraction technology. Um, and initially, our plan was to license that to large existing producers, which we will continue to do. But now that we have the highest level of confidence that our technology uh, works and is the, the best economic solution and most environmentally friendly DLE technology, there's no reason that we wouldn't start to acquire our own lithium resources and produce our own lithium that we can then sell into the market yeah. in addition to licensing our technology to existing producers. So that's kind of the next uh, major initiative on the horizon for us. Um, and then, you know, it all comes down to building these large scale commercial plants. You know, we want to be producing hundreds of thousands of tons of lithium, which is, is, is required for the EV transition over the next five, 10 years. Mm. Yeah. Well, the, the, the thing I was kind of hoping you'd say, you did say, and that is um, that you're, uh, you're looking to probably acquire some of these areas, because once this is obviously identified, <clears throat> the real estate agents are going to have a they're going to have a field day uh, trying to peddle different lots or different even even if it's owned by a by a country or whatnot. There's still going to be you're still going to have to come in and get some kind of a permit to extract from it and whatnot. Definitely. I mean, the the thing about it is there. There's, there's a decent business right now around these junior exploration companies that have these lithium resources or, or mm -hmm. land uh, that theoretically has lithium in brines below. But in reality, that's worth zero unless you can extract it right. and yeah. produce uh, a viable product. And that's really where we come in. So, you know, there's a partnership aspect to it. Um, both sides hold value and one is worthless without the other. Yeah. But, you know, we, uh, we have a lot of irons in the fire right now um, and are looking at a lot of different opportunities around that. Mm. Well, it sounds really exciting. Um, I like what I saw. Um, I, I know we need a lot of lithium <clears throat> and, uh, and it doesn't matter which one of the battery systems like a lot of people are saying well, well we just go to lfp and then we don't need lithium well the l is kind of like a dead giveaway but at the end of the day this is uh this has been a really good tour and i really appreciate it um i'd like to thank you for uh, letting us uh, have a look 
and <laughs> overruling everybody about you know what we can film and what we can't film. <laughs> so, anyways, thank you very much. Yeah. This was great. Thank you, thank Sandy. you. Appreciate thank it. It was wonderful. And thank you for watching, everybody. Um, stay tuned. There's more to come. Thanks. Bye.